So hi, um, I'm creating this video because I'm too lazy to write a bunch of documentation and um, I really feel that it's a lot easier just to watch somebody go for a screen. So last Thursday Vince Blanchard asked me how we can how we can improve our code quality, um, our secure coding practices and uh, we bandied around a bunch of solutions, um, you know one of them being an IBM solution. Um, Matt McKenzie and myself, uh, we suggested using there's a, an open source path where you can combine um, a product called uh, SonarQ um, and find bugs to uh, to to scan projects for uh, for security vulnerabilities. So what I've done is I've set up a server that does that 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 scans our code and um, and it scans the security vulnerabilities. So I'm going to walk you through how that works. So um, the first thing I'm going to show you is the architecture. This is the five-minute architecture. Um, in the middle there, you see Sonar Scanner. And what it does is it scans source code on a file system. And it, it puts those results in a, a database. I'm using MySQL for, for now because it's open source and it's free to use. Um, and then Sonar Cube. But Sonar Cube is it's a server to, that reads those, those, those reports. It basically prints an HTML, presents an HTML, you, you, you go even lets you go through all the uh, security reports. Um, I wrote a simple shell script that pulls pulls the projects out of GitHub, and um, the whole thing's kicked off by Crontech, uh, which runs it once a day at 10.30 or so. So it's nice, it's all open source, GitHub, you know, Git open source, Sonar Scanner's open source, MySQL's open source, and whatnot. So that's your simple five minute architecture. So what I'll do is I'll show you the results. Is um, here is the Sonar Cube uh, uh, UI. Uh, you don't need to log in. You can you can do this anonymously. So it shows that I have two projects analyzed. What I did for a demo was I, I wanted to illustrate that uh, it could handle front end technologies like JavaScript and, and various HTML frameworks as well as back-end Java server framework. So I picked Elements Online UI, which is mostly JavaScript, and I picked um, Member Extend External Services, which is a, one of our more traditional back-end Java applications. So when you see the dashboard here, you can see that, um, let's take a look at Elements Online UI, is we download that from GitHub, and we scanned it, and you can see some th interesting things here, is that it's, it says it's JavaScript, um, it has 0% uh, um, uh, J unit coverage, or unit coverage, um, and it has certain duplication and errors, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to plunge right into what it shows there. Now, the purposes that I'm using this for is security vulnerabilities. So if you look at the elements online UI, it's reporting five vulnerabilities. It's also reporting 10 defects and five bugs fines and various other things, okay? So, um, and what it also does is, on the left-hand side, you see number of vulnerabilities. On the right-hand side is it'll show the leakage. It'll show um, what new defects have been entered or vulnerabilities have been entered since the last time we did a scan. Um, and I will show you the activity. I'll just jump over the activity here. As you can see, I've been running scans all the morning. I ran a scan 1040, 1036, 1035. Mostly I was trying to figure out how to, uh, my shell script should work. Um, so if I go back to the issues, oh, sorry, if I go back to the, the home of the project, I'm going to take a look at the, the vulnerabilities. So I take a look at the vulnerabilities, it'll list, um, you notice it's listing five vulnerabilities. It'll list the severity. In this case, it's listing them all as minor. Um, and what it allows you to do, if you go over here, it'll, it'll let you plunge right into the code. It'll show you the code. It'll show you the problems. In this case, it's saying, remove this login statement. And the reason it does is for JavaScript, when you run console.log, it prints it, you can view it in the browser. So in this case, it's innocuous, it, it looks innocuous, but you know, if somebody, if somebody printed server names or passwords or IP addresses in the log statements, they would show up in the client browser. It could be, it could be a channel for people to, to hack us, right? Um, so, um, 
And what I'm going to do is, that's, that's quite interesting. So I'm going to go back to the vulnerabilities here. Oops. You know, again, they're, they're all logged. You see, they're all very similar. Um, you know, I, I can plunge in. It'll show me. It shows me the code uh, where the error is and uh, what's wrong with it. So that's very nice. That's a JavaScript framework for UI guys. I mean, this code looks pretty good. There's just a couple logs that have to be removed. What I want to show you, if you actually if you go to the Java code, you get the same kind of, of, of look and feel. So if I go into um, member external services, I believe that's the project that uh, our external application calling calling GMP use. I think mobile. I, I believe mobile uses that to call GMP. I'm not sure. So I'm going here. It's got 65 apparent vulnerabilities, um, and if I go into here. It's reporting, for example, hard-coded password. Now, before you panic, I know from looking at it, it's not actually a hard-coded password. If I look at it, the code, again, it's just right into the code. As you can see, it's complaining this variable is a hard-coded password, but I'm guessing it's not. I think what it is, it's a hard-coded message for a log statement or an error statement if the password is expired, right? So you're going to get some false positives, but at least once you take a look, at least it gives you your venue to quickly scan through. Um, one of the nice things, and I haven't investigated this, is just the concept of quality gates. Is you can actually, if I go back, if I go back to the projects, you notice on the right hand side here it says quality gate task. You can actually go in and set quality gates and say, hey, if we get errors of this type, you know, if we get a, a mate, a blocking, uh, a blocking error, that's a, that's a vulnerability, then we will fail the quality gate, perhaps, right? So it's very nice. Um, it takes, it's not intrusive. Uh, this doesn't require any change of the code. You can check it out. It, it, it works on a Mac and checklist from GitHub. Um, I can actually configure it so that every time code is checked into certain branches, that it, it will automatically um, it will automatically uh, check for bugs and vulnerabilities in the code has been checked in. So anyway, um, that's all I have to say. Uh, thanks for watching my crappy video. Uh, have a good day.